Why should we use YouTube in the classroom? The number one reason for using YouTube in the classroom is global community. When we're accessing digital content online, we're able to access those who have mastered that content. And we're not just limited to the masters in our school building, in our classrooms, or in our state. We're able to access the best and the brightest anywhere in the world. Digital citizenship. It's important, in middle, especially in middle school, to start learning how to become proper digital citizens and netiquette has become a very important topic of discussion and education or, or pedagogy within our curriculum. Mobile access. Learning can transcend the classroom. It doesn't end at 3 o'clock when students leave and go home. With YouTube, you have mobile access on the go. I'm the teacher, the tutor, I'm available 24-7 and all students can tap into my government lectures um, at the touch of their fingertips. Educational merit. YouTube has really found a niche in the education environment and it has educational merit when it comes to lessons and curriculum. We can, like I said, we are part of a global community and we can access masters in certain content, economics, um, global studies, anywhere in the world and bring those people into our classrooms. How do we use YouTube in the classroom? In my classroom specifically, we use YouTube to build a sense of community it's important for my students to feel like they're a part of the global world. We're not just raising um, Savannah citizens, Georgia citizens, um, North Carolina citizens, Florida citizens. We are raising global citizens that should be able to make global connections, universal connections anywhere in the world. Also, we are able to access the masters. As I said previously, by accessing online content, we're able to see the best videos on that topic and we're kind of able to self-assess ourselves and see where we stand in terms of what is good and where we need to start moving towards and scaffolding our own learning, um, our own individual learning. Also sharing and publishing, those two kind of go hand in hand. We can publish and share with the world and show them what we're doing here on a local level and put it out there for any, anywhere in the world for other students and citizens to, to view. Also flipping. Um, this is not a foreign term to you, I hope, by now. I hope you've seen all of your students at home watching my video lectures. It is my belief as a teacher, um, my instructional philosophy is that any lecture style content that can be um, that can be gotten by sit and listening should be done out of the classroom so when they come into the classroom we can use that practical application and apply it through debate analyzation and just discussions of those topics so the content is gotten on a much deeper level YouTube policies uh, a lot of you are familiar with YouTube, but may not be familiar with the policies. Um, there are privacy policies, and I, we're going to just touch on just, just the privacy policies for now. There are plenty more policies that they have, and we will delve into those in our tech tutorial. You have to think carefully before you post. These are tips for YouTube users. So. What they mean by that is to not think, think about what you're posting and what information you're including. You're not supposed to post full names, any IDing information, um, location, just any, any kind of specific information that could locate you. You need to get permission first. If you are going to film and post anyone else other than yourself, you need to have permission before you do so. It is against YouTube's policies to publish those who have, are easily identifiable in the videos. You must also not share your information, which ties into think carefully before you post. 
you don't want to share any personal information and thinking caref carefully before you post also about your content. The content in a YouTube video should not offend, harass, um, or contain any kind of hate language, any violence or anything that would be deemed inappropriate under our student handbook. You are still within the realm of our um, student policies when you are posting on YouTube in our classroom. Safety mode. I'm going to talk about settings a little bit to help you understand that YouTube is safe and that there are um, some settings that you can put into place to make sure that you're really using the safety modes that are there. Um, they are there, so use them. The safety mode um, screens objectionable content. So any, it's, you can consider it kind of like a parent control. Anything, any three of these things that have happened um, fall under safety mode. If any videos have been flagged by the community, uh, have been flagged for age restrictions or content, and there are other signals that YouTube uses, just, just I'm not quite aware of what the other signals are, but community flagging and age restrictions are one. We are a global community, so they heavily rely on community response to screen information. Now, it's not 100% accurate, but it is pretty accurate. Also, you're able to block users. So when you, if you go in and you have any unwanted comments or attention from users that you would prefer not to, you can go in and specifically block that user. My recommendation is from the start to go in and, and disable comments altogether on any posts that your child may be um, encouraged to post dealing with classroom content. Also, you can manage comments, and, and this is basically what I was just talking about. You can, have, you can either approve the comment and view it before it's posted to the account, or you can disable comments altogether. This brings me to the number one way to manage safety, and that's by your video privacy settings. You have three options when you publish a video, private, unlisted, and public. For the purpose of the portfolio for my, my class, I recommend that the setting that students go with is unlisted. When a video is private, the only person who has access to that video is the student when they log into that account. This does not help with publishing content. I can't access it unless I have their username and password and I never recommend giving usernames and passwords to anyone including including teachers. Unlisted is where most of the videos need to fall uh, and this is what I recommend. Unlisted means that the video will not show up in a public search and that the link has to be specifically provided in order for that video to be viewed. And then public which I ask students to stay away from. It's a decision that the student and the parent needs to make together on whether or not they publish the video as public. Basically, my message is we are living in a digital world and I'm a digital girl. And don't act like y'all all didn't just hear that song in your head. Um, this concludes my flipped session on YouTube and if you have any questions feel free to email me at Amanda Fox flipped at gmail dot com. Thank you.